So last but not least of the trio of fighters that had gotten added, you know, we showcase Jack Della, Madalena Macarena. We showcase Brandon Royva earlier this week, and we're going to showcase Erin Blanchfield. She was added to the women's flyweight division. Requested by many people, especially after her dominant win over Jessica Andrade, she only has one loss via split decision early in her career to Tracy Cortez. And where she's lacking a little bit in the stand-up, her grappling is what really makes her stand out. Doesn't have access to any turns, if I recall correctly. But she's a very, very viable fighter in this division. The only thing that's going to provide her some issues are the fighters that are extremely fast in the pocket against her. But it's been a, it's a little bit overdue. As you guys can see, she has level 5 jiu-jitsu sweeps and all that stuff. She is uh, 24 years old and she's a black belt. And she definitely shows it. So, you know, good character model. Pretty, pretty spot on for the most part. And with Alexa Grasso a champion and the weaknesses of Valentina Shevchenko, you know, she might become the youngest uh, woman champion, I'm pretty sure. But, you know, Jab is level one. Oh, uh, that's level one. The Jab is a level four. Cross is level four. Everything else isn't exactly at the highest level. Some of these, I think, could be a little bit higher. But, you know, the one, the one, two, a good one, two would take you a long way. Her kicks are pretty solid. Lead roundhouse is very good. Body side kick, front kick, you know, staple stuff that you need. Clinch strikes are good, but not too many turns, unfortunately, with the wrestling takedowns being at level 1. So, going to need to bail a lot. Level 5 jiu-jitsu sweep, so she has access to pretty much every single jiu-jitsu reversal in the game. So, that's just like the north-south. If somebody goes from north-south choking, you end up taking their back. You know, that crazy animation I posted a couple months ago. And good boxing combos, too. So, and kickboxing, too. So, pretty solid addition to the division. And I'm going to take her into ranked championships and try to get some uh, good fights in with her. So we'll be right back and hopefully we can showcase her to the best of our ability. So definitely going to be a tougher bout with this specific matchup here. Joanna Jacek, not the prime one. Well, really, there's not really too much of a difference between the prime one and the one that we see right in front of us right now. I think it's just slight differences that are very minuscule due to, like, the stats already covering those. But, Joanna is precisely one of the problems to face. I think, obviously, if these two fought, this is what <laughs> Banfield would do, right? She'd work all the grappling. Lady Zhang did a fantastic job of grappling Joanna. But there was a time where Joanna was, like, the anti-wrestler striker, like, she was every woman's woman wrestler, <laughs> anti woman's wrestler in the straw in the flyweight division. You know, Carla Esparza became champion after a very lackluster performance between Rose and Amahutis. And you know, Yana Young J Chick was like, dude, if I could fight Carla Esparza one more time, my belt is mine. But, you know, for, that didn't happen. You know, for this bulldog choke. And now we have the division where it is right now. Now, in flyweight, obviously. Flyweight didn't really go too well for Joanna and Jacek. I think she went up to try to fight Valentina Shevchenko. Valentina Shevchenko, much <laughs> much like uh, Alex Pereira, right? <laughs> Alex Pereira and um, Israel Adesanya, right? She had already lost to Shevchenko like three times in Muay Thai. I believe by decision and everything else like that. But, you know, she she did well, but the grappling was a little bit too much for Young Jacek. It was just a little bit too much. And, you know, she went back down to, what was it? You know, the, the weight class is always confused, man. No, it's straw weight, right? Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> hey, reverse this. It was straw, uh, straw weight. I think that's what it might be. She's a straw weight champion. And she's going to get up, you know, showing us some of her jiu-jitsu herself. Joanna herself, she's a blue belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. She's not exactly a fish out of water, at least in this division. I think one thing people have to remember is that, and I try to tell people this, is that when it comes to... Star ratings. We don't have any terms. When it when it comes to the star ratings and everything else like that, of course it has to do with like their ability and how they use it, right? That plays a factor, of course. But it's also relative to their division because there's there's like uh, some women in in their divisions in this game where they have like higher boxing combos than some of the dudes. But you compare the footage side by side, and it's not the same. That's why I figure like EA's logic is that. I personally am not a fan of it. I think it should be consistent across all divisions. Like if we see what we see, it needs to be consistent in that way. But you know, gotta work with what we gotta work with. But it's a pretty good round. 
But I didn't really, I'll be honest with y'all, I didn't really pay much attention to Aaron Blanchfield. Like, not much at all, you know. I was like, ah, okay. I, it wasn't until uh, the, the um, I think the fight against Miranda Raverick. Uh, I said Raverick. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Raverick. The fuck am I, Scooby-Doo? Raverick. <laughs> oh, man. I got to focus where I get knocked out. Um, all right, it's a good round, but still. With Miranda Maverick is what I meant to say. It was uh, Oliveira supported, and I remember watching that bout, and I was like, holy crap. This girl is beating the crap out of her, and it was bad, yo. Like it was, it was like a very dominant beatdown that I have not seen since um, in the women's division since like you know Tatiana Suarez since she's come back. Even prior to that, she was just ragdolling people. She ragged all the hell out of Carla Esparza. Like that, that uh, Tatiana Suarez herself, she's going to be a champion in the UFC. Outside of any concussion concussion issues or any injuries, I think she's going to be the next champion as well. And Blanchfield is definitely gonna stick, have that claim to as being the future champion. I think that she's going to be. I don't think that it's a matter of if; it's just a matter of when. And we sit her down. I'm able to do that though. But this is uh, it's gonna be good. This is gonna be good. See, there's that. Damn. Try to hit stunning into the takedown. That random front kick people throw. Like they throw this lunging front kick. We didn't see a lot of that on UFC 3. Now. People were not doing that on UFC 3. People would sidestep the ever-living crap out of it or lunge it. But I noticed there is an issue with the front kick where sometimes you can time a lunge perfectly and it might track a land. So maybe people have figured that out. The initial early animation is hard to read too. But I always view it as a little annoying thing to do. Ah, oh, gosh. Mm. Oh, my lord. Luana is fast, man. She is fucking fast. We, yeah, this is where we gotta slow down this fight. Mm. The other thing we can do too with um, with Blanchfield, I, I guess we could probably try to shoot, kind of cancel the shot, and then work into a combination. Yeah, you see that? You see how the hands just dropped? Try to set that up a little bit later. It's a good thing in UFC uh, 3, that was a very popular thing to do. Fake the takedown and then uh, go into, like, say, the tie clinch or something like that. Probably used to do that a lot with uh, Rafael dos Andros, most notably. But uh, a couple guys I, I used to play all the time in UFC 3, like FCB and uh, a couple other dudes, they would do that uh, fake takedown into, like, a strike or something. I would do, like, the fake takedown into a front kick. Because <laughs> I'm special like that. Like, even though it's so much more taxing to the stamina. I was like, ah, it might as well. It might work. Uh-oh. Got the rock. Uh-oh. We got a good flurry off that, too. Just took one fake to go. And she's out. Megamind is out. Wow. Just took one. Huh. Just took one opening. That's clean. That's clean. That's one. That's a. That's a solid weight, and that's a Joanna. Joanna. You know, I know it's not prime Joanna, but to get her out like that, we built some good damage timing wise. Yeah, that message was certainly sent, John. And it, the message has been sent. Blanchfield has definitely arrived. Ah, oh, it's ground and belt system though. Ah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. <sighs> All right, this is uh this is gonna be the big one. This is gonna be a big one. Shevchenko, no touch, no touch. And here's one of my my biggest gripes of the game already. The, the high little high low blocking, high low blocking. Mhm. Mm it's okay. Work the body kick. Nine times out of ten, after somebody throws a lead leg kick to the cross. They're using that to close the distance, and then they're looking to set up another two-shot combo. Not a lot of people did that. I know in UC3, a lot of people did it, but I think when Marshall started doing that a lot, people started to kind of like take that from him. But because they've taken that from him, they kind of make themselves predictable because... Oh, nice. Because you know like what's their uh, method to enter range. So overreacting will cost you. But, oh my gosh, Valentina is fast. I thought Joanna was fast. Look at the force behind 
head leg kick. And it, this is also the issue with the forward moving strikes too. Like the forward moving strike, it's not a planted one, and then you're moving back that fast. It's you're seeing hard forward moving strikes, and then just gliding like on ice skates going backwards. And Jesus Christ! And the takedown range. See, yeah, we we gotta grapple. We need to grapple. That's, we need to grapple. It's gonna be a motherfucker to try to clinch it too, cause she keeps circling. All right, there we go. Uh, we need we need you to chill, Valentino. We don't, we don't need you to. We need you to chill. There we go. That nice rock. No. There we go. We just had to read that sequence. The one benefit is that when a player uses a quote unquote meta fighter. They don't really have their own thing going on, and they're more likely to not kind of following a specific game plan, like the certain two shots, getting you to chase them. You can kind of read what they're going to throw at you. So, at least we managed to get that knockdown. And I really, I don't even have to press anymore, so we can back up and try to let this skirmisher per do some work. See this? <laughs> Hold on, I, I, I won't say what I got to say in a bit. Look at this. Bro, are you serious? Oh yeah, thank you. Do you see how much? Oh, good now. How much this person's offense has dwindled once we started going backwards ourselves? Look at this. They are not as defensively responsible when they go forward. Mm-hmm. We're chilling. We're chilling. Oh, come on. Yeah. I'll tell you this much. 90% of the UFC community does not know how to play going forward. What I mean by that is if they're the person that's... A lot of times there's somebody trying to make the fight happen and somebody strictly countering. The really good players, it's really hard to get away with just kind of circling, especially with a high-rated fighter, because they'll know how to pick your shots and make you pay for it. Because the style really works best because you're you're constantly running into punches. If you understand that you're running into punches, then don't run into fucking punches, right? Take your small wins, your small victories, and take the round accordingly. But notice that like once I started going backwards, this dude, the offense was not as clean. And I think part of it has to do with people always trying to time the person going forward. So we're going to go backwards a bit here. Mm hmm person makes a lot more mistakes yep way more mistakes when you go forward yeah this is going to be the story of the fight go pass on over the mount now blanchfield should have an arm triangle should try to work that in there i love using the arm triangle as a staging position it's uh the first two stages are pretty safe you know you don't lose the position so we'll go for that right now uh oh, we're not gonna get the submission, but I can, kinda, I can already tell. But you know, the first two stages are safe to cancel. What I mean by safe to cancel is that, see, if I cancel right here, notice, I'm I'm still in the half guard. I'm in top position. I'm not losing any control time. If it gets to the third part of the submission for the arm triangle, when you're trying to slide your knee across and pass on over to side control to kind of finish the submission. In that middle stage right there, obviously they lose a little bit of stamina from getting choked, but you don't want to be in your opponent's guard. Posture there. My members, my members know what I just did right now. I had a, I did a members video uh, two weeks ago on a little something I just did right there, and a couple counters and whatnot. But I'll give y'all guys a little hint. Usually, when people when they transition to the side that's holding the head, they're going for the momentum boost, right? They're trying to go for. Uh, the hip bump, and oh, that was a that was a pre denial. I ain't no fucking way that was not a pre denial. That was a hundred percent a pre denial. But usually when people go for that sweep, they're gonna go to the left. So I'm not gonna tell you guys the time because you know the members work for that. But if you transition right in the middle in between after they you know they go in this direction, you'll be able to override their sweep attempt. If they're smart though, they can try to bait you with that, and then try to. 
you know, <laughs> they're going to try to cancel your hit. But it, it's a whole, it's a bunch of mind games. The ground is really a bunch of mind games. And the best players, they know how the mind games work. Big enough. Put some arm triangle here. Now this sub right here, if you cancel this one early, or if you miss the, yeah, I should have gone for this. I mean, we have a little bit of time left. But if you go for, uh, this is the second stage, right, of this arm triangle. Watch what's going to happen. I'm going to get reversed. And I get reversed right back in the side saddle. Valentina also has the arm bar from here too. So that's not good. So the side saddle arm triangle, especially if you're going to look to use a grappler like Blanchfield. We won, the, <laughs> we won this round. We don't have to crazy. But if uh, the person in side saddle goes for an arm triangle, those first two stages are your safest stages to get the fucking escape. You need to escape during those two stages because you're going to reverse the position. Once it sinks, in, sinks into the third stage, that's when you're in some deep shit. And that's ideally where we can try and get this Valentino. Okay. No touch. Now the beautiful thing is, I know this guy only knows to go two shots, two shots, two shots. Yeah, nice takedown because I know you try to pre-deny a turn. You did it the last time. And the game, how it is with not just Valentina, but Nunez, McGregor, Max Holloway, Volkanovski. The game is just two shots, and they're alternating whether it's going to be a round strike or a straight, shot, a straight strike. What you have to learn as a player is when to counter and when to disengage. If they're popping you too much, maybe you shouldn't stay in the pocket. Just disengage entirely. Let your head off recover. Live to fight another day. Land a different shot. We're going to go up. Hey, 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 override. Um, learn, you know, basically survival a little bit longer. If you're constantly just trying to get frustrated and getting put in the blender, we we'll go up. Oh, he denied it. Mm -mm, okay, smart. We have to go another direction then next time. It, you know, if, if you keep putting yourself in that blender to get cooked up, fucked up, what do you think is going to happen? Your head elf is going to get shredded. It's not going to help you at all. But we're putting on a pretty... Workman, worksman like performance against this Valentino. I know most of the people they love to see the striking, but y'all know when a grappler gets added, yeah, we gotta get all the wrestling going. Now, I don't know when her next fight is. Now, I have to check in between rounds. I mean, we're on top right now. I could probably, yeah, I could probably look at my phone real quick. Just gonna deny that real quick. Try to pass. Fake crucifix. No denial. That's cool. Got Aaron Blanchfield loaded up with my boo. <laughs> Alright, now we're in now. Ah. That's what I get for texting in the middle of a fight. But that, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. I'm all for that. Let's put the phone down. I just I just wanted to see when Blanchfield's next fight was. Couldn't just, you couldn't just let me get away with that? I'm not going to get the submission. But we're going to score. We're going to score with this. It's all about the scoring. I'm just going to watch how we don't get Von Flued. Okay, cool. We're out of time anyways. I got to see when. Uh, take a look. I'll take a look in between rounds and see who our next fight's going to be. Okay. 28 seconds, 7, 2, 6, 4, accelerate the clock, Kimura, threaten the Kimura, this is how you stay active off of your back by the way, do not concede, <laughs> when you're off your back, do not concede so easily that you give up the round, alright, look, we can take a look at our phone, oh, oh shit, this is the same card as a, uh, Versus O'Malley. Damn. I'm doing this way. I'm doing this showcase weeks early. Huh. Damn, she's finding Tyler Santos. Oh, wait, no, not the O'Malley card. Oh, this is even earlier than that. Holloway versus the Korean zombie? Damn. Okie dokie. All right, so her next battle is going to be against Tyler Santos. That's going to be interesting. Santos gave uh, Valentina, you know, watching that fight back, 
that headbutt really did Valentino a favor. That clash of heads gave <laughs> really did a favor for Valentino. There we go. Speaking of clash of heads, clash of knuckles. Because that moment, Tyler Santos was working her, and she arguably should have gotten the nod. But it's okay. We'll make it right. We'll showcase Tyler Santos. We're fucking beating the brakes off of Valentina right now. Can we finish her? Can we finish her? Of course, we gotta go for the sub. Tyler Santos, I haven't showcased her since she got added, I don't think. I think that's a great, that's gonna be a great litmus, litmus test for uh, Aaron Blanchfield. Tyler Santos, she gave the champion. Oh my god, you're going for this shit again? Ah, I'm the worst at denying that. Maybe we'll go for the guillotine. But, you know, she gave Valentina a tough fight. So, if Blanchfield were to walk through Tyler Santos, yeah, she 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 gonna be the one. That being said, Santos has some nasty striking behind her jiu-jitsu, if I'm not mistaken. Uh oh Okay. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Tyler, is Tyler Santos a black belt? I think she's a black belt. I could be wrong, though. Could be wrong. I mean, she might be. She's a little bit on the older side, too. I think she's a... No, I don't think she's a black belt. I think she actually might have been like a purple belt or a blue belt. And she was doing some work on Valentina. So we'll see. But the striking edge I definitely think would be in Santos' favor. We're beating this Valentina up so bad. <laughs> We're not even focusing on Valentina. We're like, you're old news. Arm triangle time. You're, you're old news now, Valentina. Sorry. She is still one of the greatest uh, combat athletes of all time. Especially in the women's division. She had a crazy, crazy reign. And she gave us a crazy, incredible, emphatic KO over Jessica I. And, you know, he, he, she was looking at Jessica I like, damn, bro, I, I, did I do that to her? And that was fucking nuts. She's also, Valentina's also somebody who is beating people. She beat Holly Holm, right? I'm pretty sure she beat Holly Holm. If it wasn't, uh, I'm not mistaken, I think Valentina has beaten Holly Holm. So she has wins over people who fought for titles in the weight class above her, too. If I'm not mistaken. And she also, I think, submitted Juliana Pena, too, right? Yeah! Damn, Shevchenko has an incredible resume. Speaking of incredible resumes, let me get that resume to tap real quick. You gonna lose this? Should we stick it through? Yeah, we should stick it through. Oh! Dude, I wasn't even paying attention to the fucking time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, she she beat yeah Valentina is, and that would make sense. I think that her and Grass are rematching. That's gonna be interesting because Grasso, uh, Grasso versus Valentina. If Valentina beats Grasso, is she gonna retire, or or is it? We gotta see. We gotta see. I'm I'm actually very interested to see how that goes. If I'm not mistaken, Valentina. Um, was she winning the bout? You know what? I gotta rewatch that fight. I remember the finish, but I don't remember the fight. I gotta rewatch that fight. Make sure I have a nice Valentina Grasso showcase for y'all too. But that's gonna come much later. Uh oh. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna draw him in. We're gonna draw him in. We've already kind of made our point. We've made our point on the ground already. Now we're gonna make Skirmisher put in work. Okay. I'm going to play the role of the counterfighter right now. He's going to switch it up. Come on. Got your rock now. Got your rock. Got your stumbling. Stop doing that stupid roll, brother. Ain't going to help you. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. Right by the fucking dude. <laughs> I was right by the cage. There's no reason I should have missed. The takedown ranges in this game are absolutely caca. Oh, bro, it is round five. It's like round. It's like Ralph Font shooting on Corey Sanhagen. Like you have already lost four rounds of this fight grappling. Come on. That's cool, but that's fine by me. Hey, we gotta take a decision. I'll take a decision. I got no problem with that. 
Go for the sub. Go for it from here. Mm -hmm. Okay. We just need one to now. Fuck. <laughs> I am the worst. Okay. I mean, we can still sub it from here. Uh-oh. Let's go for it. Mm, we might not get this. <laughs> we might have fucked up. I mean, if we get to the, if we get to the third stage and we end up in side control, it's not bad. But, hmm, yeah, we're not gonna finish this. But, uh oh, we're not gonna finish this. But this is gonna take a chunk out of our stamina. Wait a second. Jeez. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, bro. More victory for you, I guess. Hey, we'll take the decision. We'll take the decision. I was like, I was just get fucking just toss it out the Kimura just to kind of be like, all right, bro. He's conceded. He's mentally conceded. That's good, bro. You can keep doing that, but I'm not gonna fall for no tricks. Oh, I wish I was a flash. All right. That is as clear as a 50-45 as that ever could have been. Like, that was just all the way through dominant in every aspect of mixed martial arts. And this is a very long overdue showcase for Erin Blanchfield since she's been added. So, I don't think I'm going to have to do another showcase for her when her fight is scheduled. I think this is going to be long enough where I could be like, alright, I don't really got to do it. Unless y'all want me to. Unless y'all want me to. But... Pretty uh, submission heavy performance. You know, we took out Yana and Jacek, and now we're 100% taking out Valentina Shevchenko. Like, we are untouched. Yeah, shake your head. You know you lost that. But yeah, that's as clear as that's as clear as day. That's gonna be it for Aaron Blanchfield getting the W with her. Hopefully, you guys appreciate that. Of course, let me know what you like the most about the video. Mary 17, I appreciate y'all. I'm out of here. Much love.